Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Bug Rock of the Week episode. The 1.15 update for Bad Rock Edition is right around the corner and the 1.15 is a dedicated bug fix and a parity update, meaning that they're going to fix a whole bunch of the bugs that are currently in Bad Rock Edition and they're also going to be adding a bunch of the features that we're missing that Java Edition has. Overall, this is going to be an amazing update and it is unlike any update we have ever seen before. Most Jang is really listening to the community on this one, hearing all of our feedback and making this dedicated bug fix and parity update. And it's honestly really, really awesome. We should be super thankful to Mojang for listening to the community in this way. It's honestly something that Bedrock has needed for a very long time. And hopefully we can get more updates like 1.15 in the future. So in this video, we're going to be putting together a little list of some of the bug fixes that plague millions and millions of players every single day and that are highly highly requested to be fixed and the hopes that some of or all of these bugs will be fixed in the 1.15 updates and i'll also go over a few parody things at the end of the video that would be really nice to have implemented in 1.15 as well as big of an issue as game crashes are i will not be covering any in this video since they're always a high priority at mojang and there's always dozens upon dozens of them that get fixed every single update so they're already a high priority there's no reason to really mention them or talk about them so what's the first bug on our list i'm sure you can probably guess what it is if you know me or if you just play a lot of survival so let's go ahead and say it together on three one two three block lag block lag please fix the block lag the block lag is terrible the faster you mine the worst the block lag gets so if we go ahead and give ourselves some haste too from that beacon you'll go ahead and see that uh yeah all these blocks reappear this bug was fixed for one update around 1.9 maybe 1.10 and it was a beautiful update the best update bedrock edition has ever seen but man this this bug has been around for absolutely ages literally since bedrock edition was a thing like since better together update days and it's just it is the most painful thing ever it's gotten worse in recent updates and it's it just needs to be demolished these need to be fixed they need to be thrown out the windows directly into the bin and it just is the most terrifyingly insanity making bug that you can have because you're just trying to mine some blocks and then they just reappear after you mine them. It takes away the durability of your tools, so you lose durability even though you didn't mine anything. Please, Mojang, if you're gonna fix anything on this list, block lag, just fix the block lag so we can mine. Please, that's all we wanna do. We just wanna mine. Unfortunately, this next one isn't the easiest for me to reproduce and or get footage of, so you're just gonna have to look at my beautiful face and also the bug report for this bug. So basically, this has to do with the realms and bedrock dedicated server software and also saving the game. While the game is saving, the manifest and dot log files are not unlocked so they cannot be copied which means that you cannot take a world backup while the world is actually running you have to shut down the entire world then take a backup and then go ahead and play on that backup otherwise your backups are going to be corrupted which is a pretty major issue and if you're playing on a realm or if you're playing on a server this is a problem unfortunately i don't know that much about the bedrock dedicated server software so if you want more information on this you can check out the bug report from Foxy No Tail or go bother him directly because he knows all kinds of things about this. And next up, we have Nether Portals, which sounds pretty vague and pretty simple. However, Nether Portals on Bedrock Edition have pretty much always had one form of an issue or another. The biggest issue for a while there was that they would teleport you to the other dimension, but they wouldn't change your coordinates so that you would basically have a really easy way to reach the Far Lands. <laughs> But now they leave you on a generating terrain so that you're basically just on an infinite loading screen and there's no real way to fix it besides closing your game and then restarting and rejoining the world. It's a massive pain in the butt. Overall, it's a massive inconvenience and a giant waste of time. It would be nice if nether portals just functioned correctly and it teleported you to the other dimension without real issues or hassle. So probably the most highly requested thing for all of Bedrock Edition at the moment is mob spawning and despawning parity. 
aka give us the java style mob spawning and despawning mechanics on the bedrock edition and luckily this is an absolute miracle and just a dream come true this stuff is confirmed for the 1.15 update i've known about this for a little while now and i've been wanting to talk about it it's amazing it's so cool we're finally getting the java style mechanics i literally have my hands in the air right now it's great i'm moving them around <laughs> it's gonna be amazing however there is a chance that these mechanics will be delayed to another update if there is issues or if they don't work or if they're buggy or if they just take too long and my input on this entire situation is just take your time do it right make sure that they're implemented and if there's issues with it i hope that mojang just delays it to another update because honestly we can wait i feel like everyone would rather have properly in implemented real good mechanics than some half implemented or buggy mechanics so if there's issues with it i just hope that they delay it and that uh, we just get really good mechanics here soon and i'm seriously super happy for this i cannot wait to have the java style spawning and despawning it is going to be so much better it's going to absolutely revolutionize bedrock edition and it's going to be a whole nother game so kind of on the same note as the mob spawning and despawning issues there's been a massive increase in the number of people who have had mobs despawn on chunk borders in the recent updates and this is actually an issue that's plagued minecraft for basically a decade uh, chunk borders just like to eat mobs however it does appear that this has become more of an issue in the recent bedrock edition updates so basically any kind of entity a cow a villager a minecart can get deleted if they are in between chunk borders as you unload the chunks or leave the game and it would be really nice if there was some you know investigation into this and possibly some fixes to make sure that things don't get deleted on chunk borders it's probably going to be impossible to like fully fix but if we could get you know even like a half a fix it's just an, a decrease and the amount of things that get despawned that would be beautiful so this next one doesn't have that big of an impact on gameplay however it does affect the players because it's a massive visual glitch that happens with custom skins as you can see i am now tranker even though i should not be tranker why am i tranker i do not want to be tranker he smells like fish so if i switch over to a marketplace skin then it's no big deal of course it's not because that works perfectly but the custom skins can oftentimes swap to other players and it's really strange i don't understand how this one works but if it could be fixed that would be massive especially for content creators whose entire brand is their skin and uh, kind of need that to be mildly consistent across videos if at all possible I, I know i'm a little bit biased on this one but it does seriously affect everyone that plays multiplayer and a lot of people use custom skins and do not want to be someone else they want to be themselves that is why they chose their custom skin to be unique and special in every way and then if there's five others of them running around the world that's not super cool uh, but thank you to all of my little minions on Whispercraft for helping reproduce this one because it is a fun one. Hey, look at that. I'm GP now. That's amazing. It happens literally all the time on multiplayer. And now I'm Tranker. You saw it just happen right there. And uh, also, I'd like to point out that this was apparently fixed due to the change logs. And it is uh, definitely not fixed at all. If anything, it's worse than it's ever been. So there is that now there are a lot of different redstone issues in fact i've made several videos dedicated specifically to redstone issues but another one that i really want to be fixed is uh, hopper randomness basically hoppers will shift around the items in them so that they don't transport items in the correct order and this has massive effects on all kinds of different farms sorting systems timers and all kinds of things that use hoppers so you can see the layout of items right here you see we got diamonds and crystals carved pumpkins some pumpkin pies and some subscribes we're gonna go ahead and let all of those flow through the hoppers into the chest and you'll see that they are pretty much completely out of order as you can see the fifth item is now in the second slot 
and uh, it's not very good. It messes with a lot of different contraptions, and it would be amazing if this one could have anything said about it or anything done about it because it has been around for absolutely ages. And next up, we have the Ender Dragon, who has some incredibly acidic dragon breath that can basically instant kill you no matter what you have. I've demonstrated this before with Notch Apples and Totals of Undying and Full Diamond Armor, but basically, it just completely rips through your health bar and uh, does not care at all about anything having to do with you staying alive. Of course, it is the final boss. It's supposed to be difficult, but this is actually broken and an issue that would be really nice if we had fixed. So not to mention that Dragon's Breath can be completely invisible and basically instant kill you. As you can see, there's actually Dragon's Breath right here. And uh, yeah. How's that for game balance? <laughs> Completely invisible stump since that instantly kills you even with full diamond armor and totems and it stays around for ages. And now we need to talk about pillager patrols. These things that spawn very often throughout your Minecraft worlds and can pretty much summon and spawn anywhere. And that is extremely dangerous. The reason why this is so dangerous is because these guys can literally spawn inside of your trading halls, your villager breeders, your villager crop farms. Wherever you have villagers, these guys will spawn right around them, meaning that nothing is safe. I have actually completely abandoned all of my villager projects simply because villagers as they stand are extremely annoying to get to function the way that you want them to and the way that they should and then these guys can summon and spawn at any time and completely kill them and wipe out all of your progress and there's basically no way to spawn proof against them now the simple solution to this that was added to java edition is that they will not spawn if there is player placed light level for instance if there are torches on the ground then no patrols will spawn in the area which is beautiful and how it should be. Now, the pillager patrols are not affected by daylight, of course, only by the actual, uh, you know, light sources in the world, such as torches, sea lanterns, glowstone, you know, basic player place light that you might have around your base. If we could have this one simple change added, that would make villagers way more easy to work with and preventing these guys way easier as well, because let's be honest, nobody really likes them. So speaking of villagers, villagers let's talk about villager linking the current way that villagers seek out and find points of interest aka their workstations their beds the bells in the world is extremely problematic and very broken uh, this simple trading hall that you see right here with, you know, maybe 20 or so villagers plus a few breeding pairs this took like 12 hours to set up yeah, it's, it's not easy even for someone that knows how these guys work and for someone that doesn't know how the villagers work, it's just an absolute pain in the butt. Now, one of the reasons why it's so bad is that villagers don't seek out the nearest workstation. Like, for instance, if this guy right here uh, loses his workstation, he's not going to look for, like, you know, the closest one. He's going to go off of a list of workstations that's been generated for this village that we have and he's going to pick the one at the top of the list which could be you know a hundred blocks away it could be all the way over there and that implementation is kind of not the greatest i understand why it is the way that it is it's for optimization these guys don't need to do any searches they just go to the list they find the workstation they connect to it However, if they did actually do a little search around their current position to find the closest point of interest and then link to that, that would be beautiful. Now, they also have some issues where they go for the nearest loaded village in the world. So that means that the nearest loaded village could be like a thousand blocks away. So they can literally connect to a workstation that is over a thousand blocks away across the world. And if these guys get out of their minecarts, they'll actually try and walk to that village. <laughs> We've we've seen this on Truly Bedrock in action multiple times. There are several villagers throughout the world just like in the dead middle of nowhere in these snowy biomes just walking to who knows where but they're searching and this breaks so many different things. 
So if they could just link it to the nearest thing, it would be beautiful, things would be way easier to work with. It would still have some issues, but it would be more easy to work with. So those are the main bugs and issues that I feel like the community at large, at least on this channel and, and our community, uh, have the biggest issue with. These bugs have a massive impact on gameplay for so many players, and if even half of them were fixed, that would have a massive ripple effect on the Bedrock Edition community. It would be amazing to see these large issues that plague so many players finally be squashed now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent, again, about villagers, but also about a couple other parody things I think should be added uh, at some point in the future, if not in the 1.15 update. So, tangent time about villagers and village mechanics. The current village mechanics on Bedrock Edition are a weird mix hybrid of the old pre-village and pillage mechanics and the actual village and pillage mechanics. We're missing so many of the really nice features that Java Edition has and barely any Java tech for villagers works on Bedrock Edition. It's really strange, it's really frustrating, and it's just not cool in general. So just to list off a few of the features that we're missing that Java Edition has when it comes to villagers. We got villagers do not launch fireworks when you complete a raid successfully. Villagers do not give you free items and gifts after you defeat a raid successfully. Hero of the village is locked to the village that you defeat a raid in as compared to it being a status effect that stays with you no matter where you go in the world like on java edition villagers on java can trade up to six times more items before locking you out and needing to restock villagers on java give you more experience when trading villagers do not spawn iron golems when scared by zombies on bedrock edition villagers give you better prices after being cured from a zombie villager on Java, that is not on Bedrock Edition. And there's also far, far too many abandoned villages and zombie villages in Bedrock Edition and the recent updates. That's like eight things right off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more, but as you can see, there's quite the disparity between features when it comes to village mechanics. It'd be really nice if the villagers could get a nice overhaul to be up to date and in parity with the Java mechanics. So this next one isn't really relevant to anything. It's not a parity request. It's not a bug. It's more of a feature request, but you know what? I'm still going on a tangent. So just throw this in with the villager stuff as a part of my tangent. Anyway, Anyway, it would be absolutely amazing if the player's XUID and or gamer tag were actually stored in the player's data in the world. As you can see, we're using a world edit program right now called MCC Tool Chest PE to open up my redstone testing world. We have the local player, which is me, and then there's three other players. I have no idea who these people are or when they joined my world, and there is absolutely no way for me to figure out who these guys are. I can see all of this different amazing information about these guys, like if they're pregnant, for example, which is a strange one, but I mean, hey, that's a thing that's in the player data. And uh, yeah, there's basically no way for me to figure out who these guys are. If we stored the gamer tag or the XUID and these player things, we could figure out who exactly they are. And this would highly, highly benefit realm and server owners, admins and moderators to overall improve our community servers and realms. It'd be absolutely beautiful. However, this is of course a very niche fe feature but it's also a very easy feature to add. We really need the XUID and or the gamer tag stored somewhere accessibly in the player data. Thank you very much to Helen Angel for directly requesting this video in my Twitter DMs. I never expected or really realized that this series would ever be watched by the developers or employees of Mojang, let alone that they would like it and actually request more of them, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully this video helps with the fixiness of Bedrock Edition and maybe they brought a few bugs to light that weren't fully known about or can just help get future things fixed on the Bedrock Edition, and thank you once again, Helen.
So to absolutely no one's surprise, this Bug Rock episode is quite a bit longer and as so has taken way more time to record and edit, but I do hope that you have enjoyed this video, maybe learned about a bug or two, and if you would like to help get these bugs fixed in future updates in Minecraft, please visit the description of the video as all the bugs that I talk about have a bug report link down there. You can upvote the bug if you have experienced it, leave additional information on the bug report to help get it fixed, and all that stuff significantly helps out the developers amazingly so thank you very much for doing that and if you did enjoy this video consider leaving a like it helps out the video and the channel significantly if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this in the future then consider subscribing and i'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one thank you for watching and then there was silence